Hey, what's going on guys? Today I was driving my truck and I was thumbing through the, the gauge cluster and I came across the hour meter, which I knew had existed, but I hadn't looked at it in a long time. And it was reading exactly 4,000 hours. So I got to thinking about something. If you're in the market for a truck or a car and it's equipped with an hour meter, you might want to take a look at that because it tells, it's a little bit more revealing about how a car was used as opposed to just the mileage. And I'm talking about uh, light duty, you know, passenger cars and trucks, not not heavy equipment or medium duty trucks that run a PTO or something like that, where they have to sit uh, in one place running for long periods of time. Just talking about passenger vehicles. So this truck here, uh, 4,000 hours, and it's got about 203,000 miles on it. So if you do the math on that, it's averaged 51, almost 51 miles per hour throughout the course of its life. That's been the average speed. Uh, I have a mostly highway commute i've had this truck almost since new so that jives whereas if you were going to buy a truck such as this one here and you get in it you take a test drive look at that hour meter and if you see the hour meter is you know way disproportional to the mileage you know the thing sat idle for a long period of time or maybe it was in stop and go traffic in a big city or something like that so it's just something to consider um, many moons ago, I used to work for a rental car company at a major uh, airport, major hub location where they had several hundred vehicles. I'm not sure how many. I learned a lot about cars and I took that job because I like driving different vehicles all the time and, you know, just having fun. I was a young guy and I learned at that time I never, ever want to buy a rental car. And there are some things I looked for then that I still look for now when I buy a vehicle if it's not obvious if something has been a rental. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, one thing to look for when you're buying a vehicle and you're not sure if it was a rental or not, open the trunk lid and look for scratches coming out of the trunk this way. You know, people use rental cars when they're on vacation, they drag heavy suitcases in and out and they tend to scratch the hell out of the bumper cover here. You see that on a car, the red flag ought to go up. And it's not one or two marks. Generally, they're covered with scratches. And so that's the first thing I look for. Second thing I look for, I'll give you an example. The rental car company I used to work for, they used to have these barcode stickers that they would put on the side windows here on both sides. And it not only identified the vehicle, I think it identified where, you know, what location it belonged to for that rental outfit. You might see a mark where those stickers were affixed to the window. Um, you might also see like a, a non, no smoking sticker on the inside or a mark where a no smoking sticker may have existed at one time. So those are just a couple things to look for that should sh uh, throw up the red flag. And again, the, the outfit that I used to work for, they turned in all their rental cars to auction generally around twenty eight to 30000 not over that. Uh, so if you're buying a car and it's at that mileage, you know, there's a, there's a good chance it came from a rental fleet. Um, you know, the reason I said a minute ago I would never buy a rental car, I know how they were treated, uh, not only by employees, but also by the people, you know, the customers that rent them. And it's pretty safe bet that if a car has 30,000 miles on it and it was part of a rental fleet, that it could have been driven by hundreds and hundreds of people, not only the people that rent the vehicles, but also the workers that shuffle them from point A to point B and drive that vehicle throughout its life. Um, on the positive side, you know, these, these fleet vehicles like that, they get meticulous maintenance, but I think in most cases, the beating that they take more than outweighs that, that good maintenance. So unless you absolutely get a smoking hot deal on a rental car, I would steer clear from them if I were you. Um, one other thing too, so a lot of these big rental outfits, they're self-insured, and if they have collision damage on a car, they fix that. It never ends up on a vehicle history report. So that's something else to look for. Hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, please mash that thumbs up button and we will see you on the next one.